Hey, it's Vanessa from CraftyGemini.com and today I'm here to tell you about my newest pattern that I have for sale on my website on CraftyGemini.com and that's what you all have been asking for, my ruffled pillowcase dress. If you're familiar with my regular pillowcase dress, you know that it looks a little something like this. The pattern and the supplemental video tutorial show you how to put it all together and it's just a fabric for the body of the dress and then a trim at the bottom and remember I do all my seams very nice, clean and professional looking using those French seams. Well, my new and improved ruffled pillowcase dress that everybody's been asking about is going to show you in the pattern all step-by-step -step instructions with tons of diagrams and I'm going to show you how to make the little ruffle that goes here and then also my previous tutorial on pattern required you to make the shoulder ties just using regular store-bought ribbon and what we're going to do today is actually show you how to make your own shoulder ties out of whatever coordinating fabric you want to make. So. Just to tell you a little bit more about the pattern, the ruffled pillowcase pattern can be purchased um, the same as the other uh, pillowcase dress on my website on craftygemini.com. Just go to the tab for shop and you can see all my patterns that I have for sale there. This video that I'm working on that you're going to see now is um, just a supplemental video tutorial. So if you want all the step-by-step -step instructions, you'll need the pattern for that. And another special thing that I've added into this new pattern is uh, two complete charts. One is going to tell you exactly how much fabric you need for sizes newborn through size 8 in girls. So you just pick out what size you want, let's say 3T, and you look across, it's going to tell you how much fabric you need to purchase for the front of the dress, the back of the dress, the panel, and for the ruffle. And then I have another chart that's going to tell you the exact measurements to cut from, again, all those sizes, newborn to size 8. Let's get started with the supplemental video tutorial now. For our ruffled pillowcase dress, here are the different pieces of fabric that you'll need. We have these two big chunks here that are going to be for the front and the back of the dress. In the pattern, we refer to this as fabric A. These strips here are fabric B. This one here is the ruffle fabric, and then these ones here are going to be for our shoulder ties. After you follow the specific cutting directions for the front and the back of the dress, you know, based on the size that you chose to make it, um, what you're going to do next is then follow my step-by-step -step instructions to finish both the front and the back of the dress. And what I mean by that is that you're going to create this casing, which is where our shoulder ties are going to go through, and then you're also going to hem both armholes. So once you do that to both of these pieces, just go ahead and set them aside. Now we're going to get ready to work on making our ruffle. So these are the strips that I'll be using to make my ruffles and you want to make sure that you're cutting your strips um, to whatever length as it corresponds to the size of the dress that you're working on based on the chart that I have in my pattern. And remember again those cover sizes newborn to size 8 in girls. So I'm just about ready. Make sure that you actually prep these the way it says in the pattern so you can get them ready for sewing which is what I'm going to do next so we can start ruffling these up. So to start your ruffle, the first thing you want to do is pull out maybe about 8 inches of thread from your sewing machine. You're going to need these tails because that's what you'll be pulling on to ruffle your fabric. Then you're going to choose the longest straight stitch that you can choose. We call it sometimes a basting stitch. Basically you want the stitches to be nice and long. And then we're going to start at the beginning and you're not going to reverse stitch. Make sure that you don't back stitch. You want these thread ends to be at where we start and where we end on the other end of the strip. You want them to be completely loose and not knotted in. So I'm going to stitch about a quarter of an inch away from the raw edge. When you get to the end, this is another important part. You want to lift your presser foot up and don't clip the threads right here. Again, leave that about 8 inches or so at the end because you're, again, you're going to need those threads. So I'll clip it around here and that's what you want it to look like. The stitches be nice and long and you don't want it tied off on either end. After you stitch that first line of stitching, we're going to repeat the exact same thing about a quarter of an inch inwards from that previous stitching line. So again, I'm going to come here and pull out six to eight inches or so. I'm going to get these threads out of the way because I don't want to stitch over these ones either. And then with the same long basting stitch, stitch again. Again when we get to the end, you're going to stop and pull out, leave a little bit of a tail, and then clip your threads. So your ruffle strip should look something like this. So here's the fun part where we actually start ruffling our strips. What you want to do is locate, out of the four threads that you have on one on either end here, you want to locate the bobbin thread. So if I ran this through my machine this way, my top thread will be here, and then when you flip it, you'll have the bobbin thread on the back. And that's what you want to locate. Separate these four threads, 
two on the front and two on the back. So you're gonna tug on the two that are in the back by themselves. And notice what I'm doing, I'm just gonna feet, pull on this while I help the fabric gather here and I start evenly distributing the gathers, okay, throughout the whole ruffle and kinda just slide it along. And as you pull, the entire thing will start gathering. And the reason for that is because the stitching is not that tight because we use that long straight stitch, that basting stitch, and it's gonna allow us to gather this up. The important thing is not to tug on these two front threads. You just wanna pull on one, on the bobbin thread in the back. And start distributing your gathers. And then you're just gonna keep doing this until you end up with the ruffle that you want and that measures the exact measurement that I tell you in the pattern for the specific size dress that you're working on. Once you finish gathering up your ruffle, what I like to do is go to my ironing board, hit it with a little starch, and really press it in place so that the ruffles lay nice and flat. This makes the whole strip a lot easier for you to deal with. Once you get it down to the length that's required for your fabric B piece, what you're gonna do is just follow the instructions. It tells you to lay one of the fabric B pieces with the pretty side of the fabric facing up. Then I'm gonna lay my ruffle on it with the raw edges of the ruffle lining up with one of the sides of the raw edges of my fabric B strip. What I'm gonna do here, and notice that the ruffle curves a little bit, you just gotta work with it. Line it up so that the raw edges match just like that. You're gonna pin this in place and then you're gonna stitch on your sewing machine with a basic straight stitch one quarter of an inch from the edge just to secure this ruffle to one of your fabric B pieces. Now that your ruffle is nice and secure to your fabric B piece, you can go ahead and clip away any extra threads that you may have, okay, since that's not going to be unraveling anytime soon, and you can move on to the next step. So your next step is to take your other fabric B strip and lay it on top of your ruffle with the pretty side facing down, so you're making a sandwich with the ruffle inside. You're going to line it up with this raw edge here, pin it in place, and then use the stitch and the seam allowance that the pattern tells you to use, and you're going to stitch this entire edge up. Once your ruffle is complete, the next step is to add it to the body of the dress. I haven't quite gone through all the steps in this video right here, but my pattern walks you through everything. Remember, we always use French seams, so you get that clean look on both the inside and the outside of the dress. Here you can see what the front or the back of the dress will look like once it's completed. I use a different fabric here from the ruffle. You can keep the, the same as I did in this other little dress here. You see it's the same panel and the same ruffle. You can do that, you can switch it up if you want, but all the different cutting measurements are mentioned in my pattern. And the next step will be to complete the other side of the dress. Then you're gonna attach them both together here using French seams again. And now all we have left to show you is how to make the coordinating shoulder straps out of a fabric of your choice. So we've taken our strip based on the cutting measurements mentioned in the pattern to create the shoulder straps and here we've prepped it according to the diagram shown in the pattern. Next thing you want to do is take it to your sewing machine and using just a basic straight stitch you want to stitch real nice and close to this open edge all the way down. Now the pattern tells you to cut two of the strips this length or whatever length corresponds to the specific size dress that you're working on but keep in mind that if you don't want to have two separate shoulder straps one tying above each shoulder you can also combine the two strips and make one really long strap so that you can send it all the way through and have it tie just above one shoulder like this little dress does. So in this dress we made a wider strap which you can always tweak the measurements to whatever your liking is but notice it goes through the casing all the way around and then both ends just tie over one shoulder so you can also do it that way if that's what you want but once you're done stitching this up then you just run it through the casing of your dress and your ruffled pillowcase dress is complete Thanks for watching the supplemental video tutorial for my new ruffled pillowcase dress. To purchase the pattern and all the step-by-step -step instructions, including the charts for both the fabric requirements and the cutting requirements for sizes newborn to size 8, you can check out the pattern and purchase it on my website at craftygemini.com. If you're not aware, I also sell the pattern with the step-by-step -step instructions to my more basic pillowcase dress, which is a great beginner project.